universe will end. The two laws of thermodynamics are fundamental laws of physics. The two laws of thermodynamics are always true everywhere in the universe until the end of time. The first law of thermodynamics is that energy can never be created or destroyed. The amount of energy in the universe is always constant. All suns and stars have a limited amount of energy. As a star emits light in all directions, it uses up this energy. Energy can be thought of as boxes that are attached to all objects and that can be transferred from one object to another. These boxes can never be created or destroyed. Faster objects have more energy than slower objects. Energy can hide in many forms. For example, a spring has the potential to move objects. Gravity also has the potential to move objects. Objects at higher elevations have more energy. Objects at higher elevations create more motion when they fall. The energy per particle inside an object is what we call temperature. Since energy can never be created or destroyed, and objects at higher elevations have more energy, this means that objects must speed up as they fall, and objects must slow down as they go up. Energy is not destroyed when friction slows down objects, because the friction speeds up the molecules, increasing the temperature. Energy is not destroyed when the temperature goes back down because the motion is dispersed to the surrounding molecules. There is also a hidden form of energy that all life and technology depends on. This is the chemical energy in the food we eat and in the fuels we burn. This comes from the electrons that bond molecules together. Here, they absorb energy. Here, they emit energy in the form of light. A molecule absorbs or releases energy when the bonds between its atoms are created or destroyed.
there is another form of energy which is far greater than all of these others combined. Albert Einstein discovered that mass is also a form of energy. Mass is never created or destroyed in any of the reactions we have discussed so far. When certain atomic nucleuses combine or separate, some mass completely disappears from the universe. The energy of this missing mass is then released. Nucleuses splitting apart power nuclear reactors. Nucleuses combining powers the sun and stars. There are many other phenomena that contain energy boxes. Energy boxes are responsible for everything that happens in the universe. However, here's the part that's mysterious. These energy boxes do not actually exist. No one can see, touch, or observe energy boxes. We can only observe things like a car's speed and a spring's compression. We can measure an object's elevation, mass, and temperature. We've learned that when any one of these properties changes, it must correspond to a change in one of the other properties. We've given this phenomena a name. The name we've chosen is energy. However, although we've given it a name, no one really knows what energy actually is. What's even more mysterious is that energy flows backwards in time in exactly the same way as it does forwards in time. There is no way to know that a video is being played in reverse. Even with time flowing backwards, all the laws of physics look like they're being obeyed. If you reverse the directions of the particles and then follow the laws of physics, you'll get the exact same results in reverse order. Even for chemical and nuclear reactions, the laws of physics work the same way backwards in time.
Therefore, reactions such as these should be physically possible. Yet we never see them occur. There's only one reason these events never happen. The second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics is the only physical law that does not work the same way backwards in time. As one example of it, if you lift the barrier, the balls will permanently spread out throughout the entire box. No matter how long you wait, the balls will never again gather together in one small area. To understand what the second law of thermodynamics says for the end of the universe, imagine the following. We have five objects in one sphere and zero objects in the other sphere. Now suppose that one of the objects is in the other sphere. There are five different ways this can happen. Now suppose that two objects are in the other sphere. This time, there are many more different ways that this can happen. When there are more ways that something can happen, we give this a name and we say that it has a higher entropy. This situation has the lowest entropy because there is only one way it can happen.